Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Today we're going to do a how-to video on how to apply decals. This has uh, been uh, a subject that a lot of people have asked questions about, so we're going to go ahead and do that today. A few things you need. You'll need a good sharp razor blade or an X-Acto knife. You'll need some Q-tips. Here's my decal sheet that I got from Second Chance Red Lines. And we'll go into Second Chance Red Lines here in a bit. But we'll also need the micro set, which will definitely help applying your decals. Now the first thing you need to do when you get your decals is to trim them as close as possible to where you're going to be applying the decals. And as you'll see as I trim out the decals here, I'm going as close as I possibly can to the outline of the decal. Now one of the other things you'll need to do is trim the decal so it fits around the wheel well. And again, get as close as possible. If you don't have to have any overlap or anything hanging over an area that you don't need the decal, then go ahead and cut it out. But if it means sacrificing stability when you're putting on the decal, like if you got a very thin portion, you can always try and trim it up later on. So again, as you see here, I'm trying to trim up the decal as close as I possibly can to the outline of the decal itself. Let's go ahead and speed up the cutting here. Let's pop this out first so you can take a look at it. Make sure you have a nice sharp X-Acto blade also. Now, when it comes to X-Acto blades, you also want to ensure that you use a good quality blade. Now, I bought some cheapy ones, and they didn't work that well, so I went back to paying a little bit more to get the good X-Acto ones. Again, trim these up as close as you possibly can. That looks pretty darn good right there. And that's going to fit right in place over the car, as you see. Let's go ahead and trim out the rest of the decals. Okay, we've got the decals all trimmed out. Now I have this little plastic dish, and in the dish I have a sponge. Now the reason I have that sponge in there is so the decals that I put in the water won't float away and fall off the decal paper before I get a chance to apply it. Now this is a really good tip here to put your decals on this sponge. They'll stay moist, and they won't float away on you in the water especially if you have super tiny decals like little sponsorship decals or license plates and stuff like that. Okay, here we have the body of the car. It's all painted up. This is a 67 Chevelle. It's one of my favorite cars. We're going to use some of this micro set and we're going to wipe down the side of the car. Now the micro set helps the decal adhere to the body and it also softens it up slightly so it'll fit into the um, areas around your door jams, your door handles, etc., etc. Now later on, you may want to come back in with the microsaw and it'll help soften up the decal really good to fit around those complex curves. Slide the decal slightly off the application paper and then pull the paper out from underneath it. 
again you've got that micro set on there and then move it into place with your fingers or a, a toothpick or a q-tip or something like that just be careful with the q-tip because they do have little hairs on there from the cotton and it may get underneath your decal and ruin your uh, your paint job once you get it in place take a q-tip and work out any excess fluid that might be underneath the decal here I've got the q-tip that I have the micro set on but I'm also going to take the dry end of the q-tip again and squeegee out that excess moisture now the more you work the decal the more chances you have of screwing it up so once you get it into place leave it because if you keep messing with it you're going to screw it up and you're going to have to either get more decals whatever now normally when I have decals or make decals or buy some from second chance red lines I usually order a couple of sets of decals in case I screw up and it does happen occasionally now let's go for the picture on the roof I've applied the micro set and here I have my die cast graveyard decal with some flames placed underneath it again move your paper slide the decal off position it with your finger where you want it and then squeegee out the excess fluid now I use the micro, micro set to uh, help squeegee it out first so I don't uh, don't hurt the decal by crumbling it etc now when you get these decals from second chance red lines they've already got a protective coating on them from the printing process so they're good to go again squeegee out all the wrinkles and you you still may get some just take your time it's going to take practice you may have to pull the decal up if you have uh, some really bad wrinkles in there we'll get the microsol and we'll smooth that out later on There we go, that helped. See, you keep messing with it, you're going to screw it up. I do get that smoothed out eventually. Let's go ahead and move on. To the next area where we're going to apply decals here we're going to put the flames on the hood now notice how the hood is raised there in the middle this is where micro set or micro saw excuse me is going to help out later on place your decal where you need it to and then squeegee it out with your q-tip position it where you need to to make sure that it's centered and again take your q-tip and work out the fluid and the wrinkles that's looking pretty darn good Now again, the difference between Microsol and Microset. Microset helps you apply the decals. Microsol comes in later and softens up the decals and softens it up to where you can work it around door jams and, and door handles and raised hoods like you see here, etc. Now we're going to apply the decal to the trunk. This is a pretty flat surface, so you shouldn't have any problems here. Again, work the decal off the paper, slide the paper out from underneath, position a decal where you need it or want it, and then use your Q-tip to squeegee out the excess moisture. Now, it's still wet under there, so that means that it's floating on top of the fluid. You may have to hold one corner of it down with your thumb or your finger, and then work out one side 
and then go back to the other side afterwards. Let's rub down the other side with the microset. There we go. I gave Vince from Second Chance Redlines the information that I wanted on the car and he came out with an excellent layout for me. Now these decals were printed with a laser printer. There's a big difference when you're using a laser printer and you're using an inkjet printer. And we'll get into that in just a bit. Now all these decals here have a white toner base which means if you place it on a dark surface vehicle it's going to show up really well. If you have just colors printed on clear paper or clear decal transfer paper then it's going to have the color show through the decal colors and it's going to muddy them up and it's not going to look very well now it's going to take you a bit to practice putting decals on but you will get good at it the more you do it this looks really good. Now I'm going to let this set a minimum of 12 hours. I prefer to let them set overnight and it, it tends to let all the moisture out because with decals on cars you're going to have to go back in and clear coat over them to protect the decals. If you don't eventually they will peel up and they won't look good and if they get scratched or whatever that clear coat is definitely going to help them out. Now again, I used Microset, and then later on you can come back in with the Microsol and flatten out the decals in any areas that are raised. Now Vince from Second Chance Redlines also has his decal setting solution, and this works out very, very well. So if you want to get some decal setting solution, get Microsol or Microset, or get the decal setting solution from Second Chance Redlines. Now here was the final application of the decals with a clear coat put over the top of them. That car turned out absolutely beautiful. I'm very happy and very proud of the way this car turned out. This looks good. Now after we got the car all back together and put the wheels on it, the car turned out absolutely beautiful. It's amazing how good your cars can look with just the application of some decals. A little bit of detail here on the tail lights, etc. Some wheels, some uh, wheel swap here from Sam Ed Wheels. That looks absolutely beautiful. Now I just happened to make this car, it's a prototype, but I made some cars for some of my Patreon subscribers and they're all going to get one of these. Now, here's what I was talking about earlier. If you just print on clear without the white toner underneath, the color of the car is going to show through. So the darker the car, it's going to muddy up the graphics. So definitely, if you've got a really nice uh, decal job that you need to do on your car, you're going to have to get someone that does white toner decals to get them printed up for you, or they may already have them all made up. You just have to look and see what they offer on their website. But that's what happens if you just print on clear and then put it on a darker colored vehicle. Now, they do have decal paper that actually has a white base underneath it, and you can print on that also. Here's the same car, and we got a decal with the white, uh, white backing paper underneath. Now, I say paper, it's actually a very thin plastic. But that's what it'll look like. Now with something like this, you would have to trim it up with a razor blade super, super close 
but you're still going to be see a thick white outline around it and it's not going to look very very well okay now the other thing is if you're using an inkjet printer you're going to have to cover those decals with a, a coating of lacquer to protect it because if you put it in the water it'll bleed now here are some measurements if you need to take measurements for decals for second chance red lines this is what you need you'll need to have a straight top down shot as you see in the upper left hand corner you'll also need to have a straight on shot in the top upper right hand corner as you see there now in the bottom left hand corner you see the car at an angle that shot is no good you can't get a good measurement off a vehicle like this in order to put decals on now the bottom right hand corner that is the only measurement that they need at second chance red lines like I said the bottom right hand corner is what you'll need to take their measurements of now it's from very front of the car to the very back of the car and the picture has to be nice and square now when you're taking the measurements it's a lot better if you use millimeters because you can get a lot more accurate off these now you'll have to ask Vince from second chance red lines does he have the template for that particular car if he does you don't need the measurements you just need to get him the artwork that you want and give him an idea of what you need and what you're looking for now if you happen to have an odd car that he doesn't have the template for that's when you're going to need to take pictures like you see here on the screen and get him measurements so he can do you a very good job on the decals you need also not only can he do the 164 decals he can also do 143rd 118 124 etc he can do all kinds of decals but again you're going to need to take good pictures and get him very good measurements so he can get you the decals that you want and need now the other thing is if you happen to have some artwork that you want done you may have to sign a hold harmless agreement and the reason for that is if you send him some artwork that might be copyrighted like from Walt Disney or something like that he's not gonna do it for you folks so all you're doing by filling out this form here is telling Vince that you have the right to use this artwork in the decals that you're having made and again he's protecting his own interest also now when it comes to decals Vince has already pre-made over 1200 different types of decals for different vehicles he also carries a complete line of restoration parts for your old red line needs he's got tires hoods windshields etc so please check him out he's got all kinds of things available on his website he also has the new retro flame paints which are excellent for your old red line restoration so please check those out on his website thank you for joining me today on diecast graveyard we've got a lot more videos coming up in the future so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and thank you again for joining me here today if there's something you'd like to see put it in the comments thank you and cheers